Good evening, faithful watchers. Welcome to Nate's Garage and Bakery. We are going to stick part of the X carriage on to the Z axes, which we're going to mount to this frame. And we're going to end up with something that looks like this. Without further ado, let's do it. We are going to put this one aside for now. We're going to mount an end stop. Another one of these switches. I'm just going to go ahead and peel it right off of here. I'm going to pretend like they're all completely separate. So if they're not, I'll just zip tie them up. Whatever. I expect to have bundles of wires running everywhere. I will clean that up when I get to it. Now. How's this supposed to go on there? It is supposed to go on there. Like so. You see the two little holes right here? You see this thing's facing out this way, and that switch is supposed to be up here so that it hits on something. Probably doesn't really matter if it's that way or this way, but again, I'm going to put it on there like it says. M2.16 They say to put these cap screws through this way like so and not for each don't you go run away on me right now punk oh come on these are some tiny ass screws. Tighten them up for what it's worth. They give you a screw there, it's about 50 feet too long. Make sure you get that sucker in there, I guess. 50 feet too long and a little tough to tighten up to where that switch doesn't move around a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the cheapo dikes as pliers. so that I can tighten these up a little more. And since that is a junk-ass Allen wrench, it's going to slip before those things strip out. So we shouldn't have any problems whatsoever with it being too tight, right? All right, so there's our limit switch there. Okay, so now what needs to happen is that we get these 410 millimeter rods back out of here. These are the 410s, these long ones. Okay, so the 410 rods, 410 millimeter rods, go into these oddball shaped holes right here. We've got a half moon shape there and a half moon shape there. They are meant to hold these nice and tight, which they do. Ah, hopefully I don't press that through the other side of the earth. Get another long one out there. There's our two long ones. If you kind of twist them as you put them in, it uh, tends to make them a little easier to go, I guess. And there's a little spot in there you can kind of see. I think it's pretty much bumped up against the end of where it can go as far as that goes. So now we've got chopsticks with a limit switch on them so that you can tell if you're choked up too far on your chopsticks. That's what that's for. Right. Now what you do is similar to how we did these two rods we're gonna put these sliders on here so the remaining three rod sliders and I do realize that when I first said what these are for I was completely wrong. Two for each axis. No. Three for two of the axes. How's this go? This goes in such a fashion that we have this in this orientation. We have two of them on the top rail. And one of them on the bottom rail. So basically, 
What I'm saying here is that if you hold this to where these two screws from the limit switch are facing you, like so, you'll put two on the top rod and one on the bottom rod. And uh, there you go. So what you want to do is make sure that these flanges face the same way on both parts when you put that sucker in there. So, do you feel me now? Alrighty then. Oh, I went too far, of course. See how they're not uh, flush anymore. Damn it, Nate. So, I'll just uh, wing dang doodle those out just a little further. There we go. I don't know if these two rods got pressed in the same distance, as I probably should measure between here and here and here and here. So, I think I'll do that. Ah, stupid. 12 and. and I'm. Ten and a half sixteenths. Thanks for we're an American. Let's try this one. Twelve and ten and a half to eleven ish sixteenths. That's pretty good final mix. So there you go. Make sure those are flush and uh she pushed those in all the way. Now what we're going to do is attach it in such a way that it's going to be on here sliding up and down like so. Now first thing you're going to have to do to do that is use the remaining couple parts or at least several of the remaining couple parts of your acrylic kit uh, similar to how we did it on the end rods for this bottom section here we're going to attach these to the top now it does uh, require you to pay attention to the orientation if you see here the one hole is set back further than the other one as far as that direction goes so that inner closer hole needs to be on the outside of the frame so I'm going to put this one over here because I've got a bad side on it because those chipped out. So I'm going to put this one over here. I'm going to put this one over here. So that's the orientation they need to be in. And then uh, those are the caps that are going to hold the rods in place once we get the rods in place. So same deal. So we're going to use uh, what's it, M5 by 12 and M5 nuts. So uh, M5 by 12s go and four and five nuts again this is going to be my left side here barely thread that on there because i think these are barely long enough now i'm going to tighten these a little bit but not too tight because i have a feeling i'm going to have to align things just right because you want the rods going straight up and down and so forth so there's that one same deal with this one again make sure the lesser distance here is facing the outside of the frame like that next thing you want to do is get these polished rods out these are the shorties shouties and they are going to go through a couple things here. We want the bottle opener to be towards the left side. So these rods are going to go through these outer holes, through that bearing, and into that little hole right here. And then the motor case is actually going to stop that from going down any further. So these will come down right to there. Rod comes to the top. It goes through the bearing. You'll have to juke it around a little bit just to get it to slide through. And then it's going to sit right there in that little spot, like so. 
And then you're going to do the same thing with the other side. On the over here, you'll put it through the out side. Watch my hooser. They're obviously a little tight. It's good. That's fine. We'll put it through the bearing. And we'll seat it in that hole on this flange. <laughs> Look at that shit right there, baby. Oh snap, we got us an up and down axis. They call that the Z in the fancy folks' home. But what we need to do now is to put the screw rods down through the other hole. Okay, make sure those are put all the way down. And I'm going to grab my screw rods, at least the two big ones. So. I've got my two big screw rods here, and let's, now the trick here is that you gotta put them in there and screw them down at the same exact time, otherwise you're going to jack this thing up sideways in some fashion so that you're going to get a jam of some sort. So put that one down there, put that one down there until it makes contact. And then what you want to do is screw them in there. You want the motor shaft to come through only as far as this first slit here. If even that. Basically just enough to get the screws on it. And you want the screw shaft to come down here just far enough for the screws to get a hold of it. You want all those slits in the middle there to be all by themselves. So I tried to jam it all the way in there. That was my stupid idea. So what I'm going to do here is uh, actually get my trusty crayon out here. What I'm going to do is make a mark here to note how far in it needs to go before I stop trying to shove it in. I'm going to assume that these collars are similar enough to where I can mark the same mark on both of them. Like so. Let's try this again, shall we? The screw here is going to go on the flat side of the motor shaft. We will tighten that in there. Oh yeah, baby. These uh, these two stepper motors, as I understand it, are driven by the same driver, so they will go at the same rate up and down the murder further. Now what we haven't put in place yet is a limit switch for down which I'm sure we will get to here at some point. Yeah so I forgot one part which is to actually cap these top uh, these top little rods up here so they don't come up through the thing there. So what you do with that simply is get these two little acrylic pieces and the M3 by 20s and M3 nuts. One of them is going to go up here at the top like so. Screw goes down to the top. It probably doesn't really matter a whole lot which direction it goes since I have this thing turned all the way up right now. I did that because it's going to be easier to figure out if this is level across the beam that's also up here than. Here we go, so far we got our little uh, doodum and bobber and, uh, and uh, it's looking pretty good, so uh, yeah, it's looking real nice, uh, gee, gee, it's looking real nice. Got our, I guess that's our X axis and Z axis and Y axis. Well, that's it for this episode on Nate's Garage and Bakery. Did you get this far? Did you like what you saw? Go ahead on and click that subscribe button for future videos. Hell, click the like button while you're at it. Leave a comment if you got questions. I'll 
Try to answer. Later.